Well, today, starting out like most of my days, I get up in the morning, have breakfast, and uh, come out and feed the horses. The horses are always happy to see me. You can tell that they're already eating and, and pretty content, which is kind of cool. I'm flying and to Salt Lake City today, and we're going to meet with Lauren Pancratz. So Lauren is our uh, church planter in, in uh, actually Centerville, Utah. And he's got a guy that he knows that's planting another church and that we're going to be uh, meeting with and trying to decide if this is somebody we can partner with. And the exciting part, we get to fly in a twin engine plane. I love to fly. Uh, something I did since I was, my dad flew in, in a 182 when I was a kid. And uh, to be able to fly in a small aircraft is just, I don't know, it's just kind of a kick for me. So Mike Gray's our pilot and he's gonna he's gonna take uh, he and i are gonna fly to salt lake today so this is the day starting out you're gonna hear a little some updates you're gonna get some time in the cockpit so you can see the plane that we're gonna fly in and and uh, kind of our journey and i want you to be able to see really what what god is doing and how he's using shine hills to to uh start other churches in our region and bless other people so it should be a great journey great day hardly, hardly a cloud in the sky i mean just very light clouds Hardly any wind. This is, man, this is my kind of day. Um, especially if I'm going to fly in a small plane, this is cool. So, hope you'll enjoy the journey. I'm running a little late. I really don't have time to do this. My truck just turns into Maverick. I, just the way it is. I can't stop it. Got to get a couple power bars and hopefully I can find something that Mike likes. We don't, you don't want to get too much liquid. There's not porta potties up in the sky on these twin engines, but, uh, I'm trying to find something or maybe you can get me by get a couple of power bars. I hope Mike likes these. I don't know. These are my favorite. Right there. Peanut butter ones, those things right there. That's that's the one. That's the Mike, I don't know. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with that's a chip. That's a that's usually pretty safe yeah. No, gum. I'm gonna pass on the water. I don't think we need the water today. I'll find some gum. I like those Mentos. I'm going to get extra. That's what we always had a mission for. Okay, so I made it in and out. It's kind of weird carrying around a selfie stick and talking in Maverick. I'm not used to doing this. Tracking your own journey. Kind of weird. Makes you look weird. But I guess if you want to come along for the journey, you got to you got to you got to deal with some weird stuff. So I'm going to try not to wreck and turn this truck around and get to the airport. I hope Mike will be. I know he's going to be ready to go. He's always ready. Last time I flew with him, he was. We were walking out to the plane before I even set my bags down. He was just ready to go. So I know he's going to be there, and uh, probably be anxious for me to pull in. I'm. I'm supposed to be there right now. I'm going to be eight minutes late. Legend Air. So this is where we're we're turning in, and uh, ten minutes late's not bad in some situations. These guys. These pilots, man, they, they have a they have a stopwatch, I think, in the front pocket. So I hope you'll forgive me for being. I got my got an overnight bag just in case. You never know when you're flying like this. Sometimes the weather can get bad, and you got to have carry an extra change of clothes. So I got overnight bag, briefcase. I think I got everything I need. I hope I can make this thing work. These selfie sticks are I don't know, they're kind of wonky. So I got here in time. They haven't even rolled the plane out yet. Mike is just walking in. And I think he looks like he's in a good mood. This is good. I'm always, in a very good mood. You always want pilots in a good mood. <laughs> it's going to be a great day for flying. You, you have a couple of different ministries that you do, and Pilots for Christ is one of them. That's kind of what we're, we're doing. You're taking us to, you've done this for me before. You've, you've flown me to, to places, and we pay for fuel, and, and you get us there. And um, this one is, is a similar kind of trip because we're going to go talk about church planting and and that's kind of you're in your Pilots for Christ hat, and you've got another hat you wear too, but tell us a little bit about that Pilots for Christ. Pilots for Christ is a group of volunteers that have uh, aircraft or piloting skills, and there are a lot of folks that need to get different places right. for medical purposes. Oh. Pastors need to get different places. Missionaries need to get different places. Uh, we exist in order to provide transportation services voluntarily uh, to these folks to help them get to Mayo Clinic or in your situation we're going to Bountiful Utah today to right. talk about a church plant. Right. Um, and, and it's a wonderful way to share the gift of aviation 
with people and in doing that share the love of Christ. Well, there, I don't know how many years ago now, two years, I think, you flew me down to my grandmother's funeral. Mm -hmm. I just got back. I stepped off the plane from India, and I really, there's no way I could have gotten there in time unless you, you said, oh, I've got, Galen, I can get you there. And, and so you you guys flew me down there, and that was that was awesome. So I, I really appreciate Pilots for Christ and what you do, and, and it's actually a bigger ministry than I than I realized. Oh yeah, they got it's got the the baggage doors open. Everything's ready to cabin go. Cabin doors this is, open. This is this is front door service. Not everybody gets this kind of service, do they? <laughs> no, we're real special. Man, <laughs> it's awesome. Twin Comanche. We're getting ready to board this Piper Twin Comanche, and uh, I don't tell us a little bit about this aircraft. This is pretty cool. Well, it's uh, it was created in 1968, and uh, it is uh, obvious twin engine and retractable gear. Uh, it's been rebuilt, repainted, and new interior and all of that stuff. So aircraft are a little different than cars. They don't go just by age, but how they've been maintained and rebuilt oh, yeah. and remanufactured. How long uh, have you had this plane? I've had this, Renee, I've had this airplane for about 12 years now. Wow, that's awesome. Oh. So apparently gas is important. Gas is important, yeah. It gets really quiet. A friend of mine once told me, he says, you know what keeps these things up in the air, Mike? I said, no. He said, noise. <laughs> As soon as you turn the noise off, it comes down. <laughs> uh, I guess you gotta laugh. Pilots have funny sense of humor, I'll just tell you. Lord, I do thank you for, for this gorgeous day. It really is just a beautiful day to fly in. Thank you for this time. I pray for a safe flight. I pray for a productive day. And, and I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, it should be fun. Good morning, Shantar. Twin Comanche 8583, Yankee, ready to go 27. Twin Comanche 8583, Yankee, Shantar, runway 27, wind 2106, clear for takeoff, clear for takeoff northwest departure approved. Clear for takeoff 27, northwest approved, 8583, Yankee. over here our ampers <clears throat> we were producing power before but we are not now we're discharging power but we're not producing power so we got a problem with our I'm sorry dude we're gonna have to read oh that's we're all right to go back got to do what you gotta do Again, we had a little little uh, little issue on the first flight, and we're gonna try 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 again. So here we go. We're off. Look at you, man! You got us on course. What are you thinking about flying today? Well, I've learned a lot. This plane is uh, different than anything I've flown in that it, I don't know, it just handles different. And you kind of have to have to make it go where you want it to. And I've enjoyed figuring out some different Alaska 1175, the morning, navigation uh, 3, eight, tools. I, that, so I appreciate your like, instruction on that. But no, I've really enjoyed it. Three, We've got some clouds on the mountains here, so we're going to make our way through Parlay Canyon down into Salt Lake. And this happens a lot, actually. Not that uncommon. Salt Lake Center, uh, Arrow 44140. We're letting down, planning to come through Parlay Canyon. We might, you might lose us here. Is this Salt? downtown Salt Lake, or? Salt Lake City. Where's the downtown area? Right, right over here, probably. Right, right uh, the, the downtown area is really this whole thing. Uh, I wonder. Huntsman 
Cancer Institute right over here. Okay. Wow. I've flown a lot of patients down here to Huntsman Cancer, Huntsman Cancer Institute. Okay. For Pilots for Christ. There's a, a, a big uh, stadium. What is this? This, this is, is Utah. Uh, that's Utah. Yeah. yeah. University of Utah. Wow. Utes. Busy airport. Yeah, it was kind of busy. Lots of traffic. Beautiful spot, and I can see that Lauren is over on the on the Sky Park terminal waiting for us. So, awesome. so we're gonna make our connection. We'll figure out how long we can stay here today and watch the weather, and then maybe have to figure out flying, what we're gonna do next. Flying is small, smaller planes. You have to. Weather kind of determines things. Weather it? does. Yeah, yeah. Well, it does. It drives a lot. We'll see what happens. The man himself is right here, ladies and gentlemen, Lauren Pankratz. <laughs> Church planter extraordinaire at uh, in uh, Bountiful? Is Centerville. That Centerville. Close to Bountiful. Oh, that's why it is. How yeah. long have you been here now? Ten years. You have been here ten years? Yeah, we moved in 2010. Oh my gosh, well, I can't believe it. End of 2009. Yeah. Well, anyway, we're going to go see your new digs. Okay. Look forward to it. I'm on uh, a school board. Okay. I've uh, been a part of for a number of years. I was on the Parks and Rec Committee Board. I was on a board called Communities That Care. Standing outside of the Bridge Community Church. Look at that. That is awesome. Beautiful building. How long have you been in here now? Uh, about a year. About right a out of year. Just yeah, remodeled. October. It. Yeah, just just took ownership and made it from a warehouse to a church. Pretty uh, good nice. parking spaces here. That's nice. So this is a warehouse area, obviously. Yeah. So we have an agreement with all the buildings here to use their parking on Sunday. Oh really? So oh that's fantastic. They've been, they've been really good. To, uh, to let us let us use their spaces. And then, did you did you repaint this? Or yep. the, it has kind of a new, yep. cool look to it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see. Let's go inside. Getting your own space is probably one of the biggest hurdles, but it's and it's worth it. Just have a home. It's been yeah, great. Do you office here? There's your yeah. Office yeah. You want to come check out? Yeah. Let's take a look at the office. Seriously, this is this is awesome. Now, did you build? You put up the walls and everything, everything. or did it have? We did the whole shebang. Gosh. It was a, a nightmare. Is that right? I, would, I don't ever wish that on anybody. No, and building is painful. Well, the, the, the issue. How long were you in the process? It was about ten months that we built it, and uh, 
My big problem, our big problem was that we had a, a cutoff date because they were demoing the place that we were in. Uh, and so we got our building permit, our occupancy permit, two days before we had to evict or be out of the other place. Wow. So it was, a, it was quite the push to get in. We had to, we had to deal with sound, so we're, we're just now putting up these little baffles yeah, in the ceiling. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. of the echo, the, yep. you know, metal roof buildings oh. a little bit. We've had that issue. It, that's a science that I don't know if anybody's mastered yet. Do you have two big side screens? Yeah. That's awesome. Two side screens. We, we're here to help people find Jesus and follow him fully. And then we define the fully with the reach, teach, grow, and go. Right. And reach, teach. Kind of trying to give people opportunities uh, for grow. Jesus. Yeah, now, how many people show up at, on a weekend now? With kids and everything, I think our numbers, uh, we've been over 300. Awesome. Um, in the last uh, last couple of months, that's we've been, I think we were at 320 in November, which is, Lauren, which that's is the best that we've ever had. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's a good thing. Good for you, brother. You, that's you, that's you said. So this is Main Street. What is happening here? So uh, this is the kids, the kids area here. So it kind of divides. There's like this little river that runs from up there down if you conceptually think about it and the young kids go this way and the older kids go this way oh, so gotcha. we've got the the red rock room um, nice. which is uh, just the toddlers the toddler room here you get it pretty planned out yeah it's worked it's it's you at uh, the uh you know, I, one of the things I'm so proud of you, Lauren, is that you, you ran the gauntlet, you know. And so one thing that I, I've been looking at church planters, and it's like, we ask so much out of them. You know, raise your support. You know, get, you all raise a family, get a church, and then you got to find land, building, and all. And, and now you're in, a, you're in your own building. You're over 300, some 320 people meeting on a weekly basis now. That, running the gauntlet, how did... I'm so proud of you. Congratulations, <laughs> Jay God, all those things. Uh, and I also know that, you know, partnerships are important. And I want to get more partners for more churches. What would you say? How does partnerships help you get to that spot? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I think I think uh, the partnerships are a lifeline for a church planter. Yeah. So you're right. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to get from point A to point B. And we can't necessarily design all the steps involved because God knows all those steps that are involved in, in all of that so I don't feel like we, we can tell all that but to be a church, effective church planner in Utah you need a surrogate church family that can step up and support you through those times that you don't have a congregation that's able to support you yet to support the church yet um, there's a lot that goes a lot of investment that goes on into the kingdom to make it work in terms of the facilities and equipment and the mailers and the you know whatever you're gonna do to, it, it all takes resources and it's all resources that the church planet doesn't have. And so, yeah, we rely, I mean, I relied on our on our surrogate church family that raised support for us, that, that supported us through those first five years that was uh, incredibly essential. And that's one of the, the most important things, I think, for a church planner in Utah, is thinking more long-term than other places, because uh, it takes a longer, on average, for a church in Utah to get sustainable. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long road. And so uh, I'm glad not to be at the start of it right now. No kidding. <laughs> I'm glad to be on the other end of that. Um, but uh, at the same time, um, it's just you've got to be thinking long term, um, and uh, and that takes that takes a family. It takes a it takes a, a, some people that you don't have to step up. And, well, I can I can tell you from China as I talk about you guys, and I'll talk about Utah, and I always mention Lauren Francrass. You've stopped by a couple of times, and uh, I'll just tell you, that we're proud of you. I mean that's. I, those of us that have planted churches know how hard this is, and uh, hard on your wife, hard on your kids, and you. I'm so, so thankful and that you're to this point, and, and uh, I can't wait to see what God's going to continue to do. God bless you, man. Appreciate you. Love you. Yep. Hey. And to disciple someone into a generous giver, that just takes time. Sure. That's that true. takes time. Yeah. And so we just have to. That's just a contextual reality here. Um, but um, we're looking to launch in the fall 2020. Uh, and so the way that people can um, come on board is by financial partnerships. Uh, we have a ministry newsletter. We'd love to send to people to let them know what's going on. Make sure you get and us on there. I, I, I want to get you on there. Uh, we have a ministry newsletter. Uh, we have a Facebook group that we invite people to. 
that's a little more frequent communication. Um, and then just, man, uh, praying for us. Um, we have been having neighborhood Advent gatherings on Sunday evening, night over Christmas. And um, this past Sunday, our neighbor January came. And January, that's her name? Jan that is January. her name. Okay. And without any, um, without any prompting, I mean, she knew she was coming to carols, cider, cocoa, cookies, and a devotional. Okay. She, knew that. she knew that. But without much prompting, she just began to open up to my wife and began to share about how she 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 was baptized Catholic. Okay. Uh, uh, ironically, yeah, yeah, perfect. She was baptized Catholic, and she just. Um, she hasn't done much with her faith, but now she wants to. She's 38, and now she wants to. And she wants to for her seven-year-old daughter. And she's asking questions as if someone who's never, literally never really been to church before, other than probably when she was a few weeks old. And so she's like, can I just go? Can I just go to you? And she was asking us what we're doing, and she's very interested. And so, so that was one of those instances where we're in our neighborhood, we're in our home, January's in our home. And um, I just felt God say, I've been working here a long time. Buddy. No kidding, that's good. You know, like that's I've been, I, this, the, I, I've been plowing ground. You're just here, you know. And so, um, so yeah, that's. Um, well, you've been. That's that's, that's a hug from heaven. That's what I. Can that's what absolutely. I can well, I don't know where your. You told me your percentage. I don't know where it's at, but you might want to calculate. Twelve thousand dollars a year. Is what we've committed to starting January, so that should have a that sum. Okay. And so we want to partner with you. I'd sure, like to have a newsletter out of, out of you. Okay. And so make sure you get signed your newsletter. We get you. And uh, we're really excited for you, man. I I've heard a lot about you, Lawrence. Everything you said is good about you, so that that's solid gold as far as I'm concerned. Man. And so we're really excited for you. Hope to hope to see God do some great things in, in and through you. I appreciate it. Yep. Also, God bless you, brother. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.